Greetings and salutations everyone, I'm Ekamak, this is Let's Play Oxygen Not Included. This is a little bit of a small um, experimental thing, a little lesson, because there's something that I want to go into detail on, and I need to do that with a standard planetoid, so we don't care about any traits or anything, we're just going in straight. We don't really care about our duplicates that much, we're just going in straight there. Although I will obviously make sure that we don't have Mouth Breather or Fletulent or Narcoleptic because I still have standards even for this strange one-shot planetoid. Um, yeah, loading screens still a little bit weird when they're doing the world gen. I wonder if people are ever going to get to the point where they can actively reverse the world generation mechanics to figure out what they get, because there's something that does sort of similar, but it's actually, there's um a fake world generator where people submit all of their world types and uh, the system will just pick out based on uh, what you ask of them, but it's not really the same thing, is it? Anyway, the thing that I want to go into is my standard go-to filtration plant design. I will admit flat out I copied it from someone else's guide on Steam, but maybe you're not maybe you're not familiar with that person on Steam. Maybe you're just following what I'm doing. I don't know. Anyway, the thing about sandbox mode is that we can jump straight into the cool stuff. Good enough. We have Lindsay, Joshua, and Camille. Lindsay is a charming woman unless you make the mistake of messing with her friends. Actually, let's just look at the bios for a little bit. This Camille loves anything that makes her feel nostalgic, including things that haven't aged well. Joshua's are precious scubas. Other duplicates are strangely incapable of cursing in a Joshua's presence. And Lindsay is a charming woman unless you make the mistake of messing with her friends. So standard, tear everything up to get your hands on everything. One, two, three, four. You know how it is with me. One, two, three, four, five, six. Anyway, we're playing in sandbox mode, which means that I can jump over to this. And it gives me access to everything in the game. In instant build mode. Um, I want to turn the instant build mode and sandbox mode off just for a smidge for realism because we do need to get our hands on a pitcher pump. And a standard toilet because we are playing this in real time, we have to respect our dupes time. Ah, huh, we might need to move this over a little bit further. Now the thing that I want to talk about is filtration plants. I use a very specific closed loop system that's really good for plumbing toilets and the like. And I want my duplicates to start digging their way over here so I can just show what the build is like, but oh well.
The thing is that it's a build that works well if you have it on the right side of the colony, but if you build it on the left side, then it takes a little bit of finagling. Oh wait, we don't want to remove critters, do we? Oh, that is not what I thought would happen, but... Now the thing to keep in mind about when you're playing in sandbox mode is that it does disable achievements. You can't just cheat your way through like that. This is just for testing out builds, like uh, creating something from scratch and then seeing if anything goes wrong before you employ it in your main colony. But also it can lead for little fun times like Spawn hundreds of uh, little spawn 20 hatches at once. Well, I guess it wouldn't be 20, but still, 212 is quite a lot of room for a bunch of little critters. So then, the way that I make my filtration plant is something that I know mostly by heart, so that's good. Uh, no, instant build mode off. It is two four floor, floor tiles, so it can easily be slotted into anywhere in a decently sized colony. It then goes one, three, two, sixteen, like that. So it's roughly ten tiles wide, like so. Two tiles in, we have the. There's two ways you can handle this because, see, duplicants can be kind of silly at times about building themselves into corners. So you might want, you have two choices, you can either put tiles here and brick it off after you're finished, or you can put in something like a pneumatic door and make sure you lock it before it finishes. But make sure that nobody can come in or out of this little area here once you're finished. After that, we need three liquid reservoirs on this floor. Very important. We have a ladder here, so that's a nice checkpoint. Up here, we have a sink. And then... Depending on whether you're running DLC, you could put a sublimination station here. But regardless, you could also, regardless of whether you're on DLC or normal, you can put in a compost. It depends on what you think is going to be your biggest problem. Do you think you're going to have a problem with dirt, or do you think you're going to have a problem with oxygen? Because the sublimination station, it does produce toxic, it does, it does produce polluted oxygen. But, I don't know. And they're on break now. After that, we put in one storage bin. We're going to keep something interesting in here. Maybe we'll keep sand. Maybe we'll keep polluted dirt. Who knows. Finishing off, we have the water sieve. 
Very important that. Over here is going to be a slight little lump jump. But yes. This is where we put the bottle emptier. This small lip here is to make sure that uh, none of it leaks out of range of this liquid pump. So yeah, that's that. We have power, we have pumps, we have sieves. The thing is, none of it is connected up. And that's where all this comes in. So this pipe here, this connects to the actual liquid stuff of the base. Anywhere that we want to bring in some polluted water, we attach it to this line. It then passes by here. The liquid pump injects new polluted we injects new liquids into the system. We don't actually have to use polluted water only. We can put in some normal water if we need to kickstart the system and we don't have access to the polluted water that we want it to be. Just a little heads up anyhow. Abes are considered sweet, delicate cre flowers. They need to be treated gingerly with great consideration for their feelings. We got a mechatronics engineer by accident. That's hilarious. But yeah, you can put no normal water flowing through the water sieve doesn't damage the sieve. Usually sending the wrong liquids through is a bad idea, but water and water sieves is one of the few cases where it's allowed. So yeah, you could also inject some water into the system instead if you need to jumpstart it quickly. It flows into this liquid reservoir. And then we have that liquid reservoir flow into this right liquid reservoir. This gives us, it's called a buffer space. Well, buffer? Buffer tank? Well, you can call it whatever you like. The important thing is it gives us some leeway so we don't have to have a perfectly viable system at all times. And 10 tons of water is a lot. I believe then we send it over to the right like this and up here. What we're going to use are liquid bridges. This is pretty self-explanatory. It allows us to send the contents of one pipe over another pipe without the two getting mixed up. Simple but extremely important. We then take the output of this tank and send it down here. Another liquid bridge. And then we take the liquid pipe down like this, across here and into here. So not only do we have 10 tons worth of storage for polluted water, so if the water sieve isn't working, it's not going to start flooding up previous pipes, but we also have five tons of storage for the water, for the normal water which means that if the water sieve isn't working, we're still going to be getting plenty of fresh water to send elsewhere. The liquid pipe goes like this, and then it is perfectly symmetrical here. So that's an easy way to tell whether you've gotten the right place. Then take that up there, rotate the liquid bridge so it's like that, and go like here. This water goes up like this, and this will connect whatever we in this facility we need an infinite supply of water for, and we don't care about food poisoning germs in it. Keep in mind that the water sieve turns polluted water into clean water. It doesn't destroy the germs. It just takes some of them and injects it into its own source of polluted dirt. 
That's another important thing and why we have this sink here. When duplicants carry the dirt around here to here, the, or when they carry polluted water to here, they're going to be covered in germs. We want them to run past this sink. This is also why we're not telling them to build the tile as of yet. It's because uh, they'd end up bricking themselves in and dying from oxygen deprivation. We don't want that. Anyway, the important thing is that the water goes into the sink, and then we give the water a sort of semi-priority back into the system. Rather than having it wander out and connect to this pipe here, what we actually do is we lead it through these two liquid bridges, swing it down like this, and then install a liquid bridge. Now it's going straight back into the tank. It doesn't need to be piped up by the liquid pump. It doesn't need to worry about clogging up this pipe. It'll just sit here and wait because the sink is going to see very low use. And finally, we put in a door, because we don't want anything strange wandering in here. Now realistically, we'd have, usually we'd have room up here so people could construct these pipes from above. That is not the case here. We gotta be cautious. Um. Okay, sandbox mode off. Guys, could you dig up a little bit of copper? And someone should really be on life support, so I guess that's your job. And your job is to operate. We're just looking at to give them a little bit of oxygen to work in this area. But yes, this is how the system works. Uh, hmm, we're going to need to destroy that oxygen diffuser at some point. Was it really necessary to make a hatch ranch? Was it really necessary for me to make 20 hatchlings? No, it wasn't, but it's still very funny to me. Anyhow, these guys are going to slowly clean out this system, but we don't need to... We don't need to actually have access up here for me to show it, so let's just speed things up a little smidge. Usually you wouldn't be pushing this hard for this system, but we're doing it here early because we have sandbox mode. I need Yeah, this is just what sandbox mode is for if we're really honest. Do we really not have enough copper ore to do anything? Um Where's the stuff on... Oh, I know, it's because I've made a lot of buildings without digging up the prerequisite copper. That's my bad. Snoring little hatchlings, aren't they? Now this is usually the point where I'd actually have um, 
staggered up people's work schedules, so honestly, let's just do that. It's not like we're doing anything special while we wait. This is Joshua's shift, so he's actually on break now. Um, bedtime goes one, two, three. Downtime goes one, two. Bath time goes one. This isn't Joshua's shift, this is Camille's shift. And this is where Lindsay takes her break at In fact, let's make these parts higher priority than anything else, just so we can get it done quicker. So, at the start you want this to be polluted dirt, so you can pick up any polluted dirt from deconstructing, say, outhouses. Just gather all of the germ-filled stuff right around here. After that, you cancel it because you won't need to bring any because you don't need to gather it all up. All the polluted dirt you'll want to be throwing straight into the compost is coming straight out of the water sieve. The goal, what you actually want to do is put filtration medium in here. That is, sand. That way, it's a bit of a later system, but... What you can do is install an auto sweeper so that it covers everything in this top area. That way it'll put the filtration medium into the water sieve and then take the dirt from the water sieve and put it into the compost. It's a nice, it's a nice little labor saver and you want to cut those corners wherever you can. Um. Can we hustle a little hustle more? Someone's about to go on break. I can tell these things. Oh, hello. We could actually get a printable again. Ada is surprisingly good. Diver's lungs is almost always worth it. And we look at who just came off shift and give Ada this shift. For all that cheap time saver. Anyhow, the liquid pump has nothing covering it. Now, usually I wouldn't do this. Usually you make sure that this area is blocked off and they can only leave by the sink, which we need to set Direction left. Very important that. You tell it to pick up all polluted water, and then you keep a very close eye on people because they'll be taking the very germy polluted water from this sink, most likely. And when they first arrive here, the sink won't be filled. 
Now there's two things you can do about that. You can either look at whoever it is that's delivering the water and keep using the move to command to keep them in this system until you have water in the sink and they can leave while washing their hands. But I don't feel like doing like waiting all that. I want to show off what this can do. So we're going to do something cheeky. We set it for water. We enable auto bottle and we turn it up to priority nine. So what's Joshua going to do? Well, he's running straight back over to the sink to the pitcher pump. Hopping on board, pumping out the water, exactly 200 kilograms because bottle emptiers can't handle more than that. Alright, he delivered the bottle emptier, now let's have a look at what it does to the pipes. Water slowly flows from there. Um, let's turn auto bottle off. Water flows through there into this tank, up through this pipe. Over this liquid bridge, it goes through. The water sieve doesn't care, it's water. It's going through straight, even though there's no filtration medium in it. It flows down here into the liquid reservoir, which is where the water is actually supposed to be stored. That flows up. Over here, because we have a liquid bridge, it will always prioritize filling the sink. Um, let's just lock this door so we can get it working properly now that we've cleared out this area. The sink is filled up. If anyone passes by here with germy hands, and if they had a reason to come in here, then probably they do have germy hands. Then it, they'll clean it. But suppose they don't. That's when it flows out through here into, well, wherever you want it. Lavatories, plumbed sinks. Really, the only thing you don't want to send it into is something that requires clean water that they're probably going to be drinking, such as the coffee machine. But yeah, that's the water filtration station. Keep in mind that you only need this whole shebang with the sinks and all the spaghetti work of pipes that's only necessary if this water is contaminated with germs, such as coming from the toilets, or from sinks that are for the toilets. If you're just doing something like, uh, oh, I don't know, carbon skimmers? You don't have to worry about carbon skimmers picking up germs, so you can just have them go straight to a water sieve and then back again. Maybe you'd put in a liquid reservoir so you can store a bit more water, but it... The point is that you only do this when you need to worry about the quality of the water. Or rather, you need to worry about what dupes will do with the dirt that they pick up from it. Anyhow, there's a, one of my mainstays in the uh, oxygen not included builds. Until next time, guys. Take care. I'll see you all around.